As a result of fluoridation, our children will be healthier and happier. There is no health hazard that justifies postponing water fluoridation. You're not dealing with a benign substance. There's much too much risk uh, for too little benefit. Fluoride <clears throat> is safe. They decided far too early before the science was properly in that fluoridation was a good thing. The dental community has no idea of the toxicology behind fluoride. Fluoride does not just affect the teeth. Fluoride is a neurotoxin. This is being drank by so many people throughout the U.S. every day. But who's responsible? Who's the doctor making sure we're not getting too much? The weight of evidence actually is more in the favor of fluoride doing damage than against. This is against all principles of modern, modern pharmacology. It's really obsolete. Water fluoridation is the practice of adding fluoride compounds to the public water supplies for the purpose of reducing tooth decay. The policy which began in the United States in the 1940s has been hailed by the Oral Health Division of the United States Centers for Disease Control as one of the top 10 public health achievements of the 20th century. However, a growing body of science indicates that fluoridation is neither safe nor effective. In this video, we examine why over 2,000 health, scientific, medical, dental, and environmental professionals are calling for an end to fluoridation worldwide. Water fluoridation is the dispensing of a drug. This is a way of delivering a medicine. Fluoride is a drug, is a medicine. Fluoride is being put in specifically to alter you physically, to make a physical change in you. This is not chlorine. This is not any number of the other uh, chemicals that are used to treat the water, make the water safe and drinkable. It's not like chlorine used to make the water supply safe and kill the bugs in the, in the, in the water supply. This is the only thing anywhere in the world that gets added to the municipal drinking waters to actually treat the human, to treat the body. There is absolutely no drug on the market that's given in a one-dose-fits-all situation. It's absolutely obsolete. It's, uh, in modern pharmacology, it's so clear that even if you have a fixed dose of a, of a drug, the in individuals respond very differently to one and the same dose. Now, in this case, you have it in the water, and people are drinking different amounts of water, so you have huge variations in the consumption. You can have an athlete, a laborer, who are drinking many, many times the amount of water. You can have someone who's diabetic, who's drinking a ton of water compared to the average. I mean, the whole name of the game in pharmacology is to deliver the right dose to the right person at the right time. And that's not what fluoridation does. It can't do it. I would prefer an individual use approach. I would have no problem with a doctor or dentist prescribing fluoride for a patient that he was keeping in touch with and monitoring for possible side effects and for, for the efficacy of the drug. That's essentially what's done with any other drug, and that's the way it should be done for fluoride. We don't put other things in the water to try to keep everybody's blood pressure down or everybody's stroke risk down, and there's no reason why we should be trying a one-size-fits-all approach for this either. The problem with adding medicine, medicine to water is an obvious one of consent, that people can't give their informed consent, which is a basic of medical ethics. We are allowing communities to do to everybody in the community what an individual doctor cannot do to an individual patient, and that is prescribe medication uh, regardless of the informed consent of the patient. What physician that you know in his right mind would treat somebody whose medical history he doesn't know, who he's never met, with a substance that's meant to do change in their bodies, and just with the advice, have as much or as little of it as you like, but you'll take it for a lifetime because it's meant to help somebody else's teeth. Voters medicate each other whether they want it or not. And if 51% of the voters say, we're going to medicate everybody in town, and they all get medicated. Fluoride is not an essential element. 
there is not a bodily requirement for fluoride. Fluoride is not an essential nutrient, certainly as far as the UK goes. Uh, you look it up in the, in the books to see what our Department of Health says, and they say that no uh, essential use has been found for fluoride in, in the human body. So it is not in the category of a vitamin, and apart from anything, it's miles more toxic than any of the vitamins. Whatever benefit there is from fluoride on teeth is topical rather than systemic. It's been shown that it's really a topical effect principally rather than a systemic effect. It's effective topically, not when it's swallowed. There's no reason for people be exposing themselves, all their internal organs, to fluoride when if it works you can you can do something topically. If you want to prevent sunburn you don't drink suntan lotion you put it on your skin and so if you want to uh, have the benefits of fluoride in oral health what you do is put it on the surface of the tooth and, and not, not drink it. The quality of evidence for topical fluoride is in a different league from the evidence on water fluoridation. I mean, absolutely no question about that. Adding fluoride to toothpaste, you are going to ingest some of it, um, and that needs to be taken seriously. Um, but it's not made to be ingested, and it's made to be rubbed onto the surface of the tooth, which is where you're supposed to have it. It's a much smarter way to go about using fluoride in dentistry. It's widely accepted that the topical application of fluoride to the surface of teeth is beneficial. Uh, I have no dispute with that. However, I can see absolutely no justification for asking the whole population to take it systemically, to swallow it, internalize it um, for that benefit because it's available in toothpastes, it's available in dental treatments at the dentist. Um, so I, I, I don't think you can justify the fluoridation of drinking water uh, on the lines of a topical treatment to teeth. It's uh, illogical. One of the recommendations I've made is because we, we now know that it doesn't need to be swallowed, that the public has to be informed. Again, informed consent. They should be told that it doesn't work by swallowing it. One of the things that the uh, proponents are very careful to stay away from is to mention how many people don't fluoridate. Most of the Western world does not fluoridate their water. Um, we are definitely in the minority in the fact that we push water fluoridation. Many of the countries in the world, the developed countries, no longer fluoridate, never did fluoridate. Most European countries do not fluoridate. Austria, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, Germany, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Italy, Greece, Portugal. The overwhelming number of countries in the world do not fluoridate, and guess what? Their teeth are just as good if not better than ours. One of the most striking things, I suppose, was to look at trends in um, tooth decay over time in various countries. The comparisons between fluoridated countries like America and unfluoridated ones like most of Europe and indeed most of the world are, are very interesting. If you look at the World Health Organization database, for 12-year-olds that tooth decay has been coming down as rapidly in these non-fluoridated European countries as it's been coming down in the United States and other fluoridated communities. Areas that don't fluoridate have seen the same decrease in tooth decay that we have seen over the same time span. If you ask someone to pick out the lines, the decline lines, which are in countries uh, where water is fluoridated from those in countries where it isn't fluoridated, actually you can't pick them out. So I found that very surprising uh, against the background of, as I say, having been a default fluoridationist. What you really need to look at and, and, and what matters at the end is what's your total body load? Children are getting a lot of fluoride from a lot of different sources. We've had a tremendous increase in fluoride from many sources. Water is one source. Um, when we drink that water and when it's made into soda pop or it's made into beverages and made into soups, made into other products, we get fluoride from that source also. And we also have a lot of pesticides that have come on the market that leave fluoride residues 
on fruits and vegetables. Fluoride is a very common component in pesticides. And so, uh, you know, if you drink a glass of grape juice, uh, that's a non-organic grape juice and it's got skins on it, you're going to get a very high level of fluoride just from your grape juice. And they're also getting it from toothpaste. Studies have shown that you swallow quite a bit of toothpaste, or the children swallow quite a bit of toothpaste. Uh, even if they're you know, told not to swallow it, uh, it just happens by accident. They, they don't rinse as well as adults and sometimes they don't have as good as swallowing actions. And therefore they're getting a lot of fluoride from that. So who's monitoring this exposure of when are we getting too much? No one's monitoring that. Nobody's looking at the total exposure to ensure that we're not getting too much and that certain subgroups aren't getting too much. The reality is we need to reduce our fluoride intake. In 2005, the Center of Disease Control admitted that 32% of our children in the United States, including children in non fluoridated areas, have dental fluorosis. About a third of the children in this country have some form of dental fluorosis, meaning that they had too much fluoride exposure during their early childhood. Dental fluorosis is damage to the tooth because of too much fluoride exposure. We swallowed too much fluoride and it shows up as white spots, brown spots on the teeth. You see these white spots uh, or splotches or lines. Uh, in, in more severe fluorosis you actually see the surface layer flaking off you see brown spots. And in severe cases, uh, there's actual chipping and pitting and, and erosion of the tooth. Dental fluorosis is a biomarker that your child has been overexposed to fluoride during the development of their teeth. We now believe that there are several mechanisms involved. Fluoride could be inhibiting the enzymes, the serine proteinases that are degrading the final traces of proteins that are left behind in the teeth. The mechanisms have something to do with interference with the enamel forming proteins or inhibition of some enzymes during that critical period. To do that, uh, impacting those, uh, uh, the enamel cells and the teeth means that it can also impact cells elsewhere in the body. The promoters have always had this faith that you could damage the growing tooth enamel, the enzymes, the G proteins, or however that happens, without damaging any other tissue in the body at the same time. And I think that's very unlikely. Not only does it, is it an effect on teeth, what's happening in the teeth is, is very likely happening in the bone as well because the, we have a similar kind of structure of, of a hydroxyapatite a mineral structure in the bone and the tooth. Uh, your teeth are sort of a, a window into the bone, a window into your skeleton. So if there's this adverse effects going on in, in the teeth, there are very likely to be adverse effects going on in the bone. It's a, a sign of toxicity. It is not just to be take or dismissed as, as merely a cosmetic effect. This whole debate has been captured for over 50 years by the dental lobby, by dentists whose preoccupation is teeth, well, teeth are not the only issue in the body. As dentists, we diagnose pathology of the mouth, diseases of the mouth. And we tend to disregard or not involve ourselves with the diseases of the rest of the body because it's not within our purview, it's not within our license to diagnose other parts of the body. Most definitely, the dental community has uh, had a, a monopoly, if you will, on the study of fluoride. And they have absolutely... Uh, put use tunnel vision to look at fluoride as a, a dental concern. However, it is not just a, a dental concern. It's a toxicity concern. The National Research Council has a report that just came out in 2006, which is one of the best sources of finding out what fluoride is doing to the rest of the body. One of the most interesting things in the report is the diversity of the number of organs that are being affected by the fluoride beyond either the teeth or the bones. We, we do need to get away from looking only at fluoride in connection with teeth. We need to be considering its effect on a whole bunch of other systems in the body, on, on people's general health in a whole lot of respects. I think the ADA's recent statement on warning against adding fluoridated water to baby formula is a uh, 
watershed uh, decision. The American Dental Association has finally done what it should have done years ago, and that is to tell parents not to use fluoridated tap water to make up formula. The American Dental Association recommends that we not uh, have fluoridated water be used for making infant formula or for infants to, to drink. One of the messages which I think is extraordinary in this whole issue is that the level of fluoride in mother's milk is so extremely low. It's 0 .004 parts per million, which is 250 times less than we put in the drinking water. There have been a couple um, men who have said, well, maybe mother's milk is flawed, but most scientists don't go that route. They say mother's milk seems to be the best we have, the best we know of, and if it's low in fluoride, maybe that's what we should have for infants, is low fluoride. Nature has devised a system for keeping fluoride away from the infant, and we're circumventing that by putting fluoride into drink water. And I think there are consequences. I think parents should know that fluoride is an extremely active chemical when it gets into our body. It can interfere with the pineal gland. It can interfere with the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland and the pineal gland are both intimately involved with brain development, mental development. A real concern with, with, with young kids, especially with, with newborn infants, is that the, the blood-brain barrier is not fully developed at that point. And when uh, children are drinking a formula made with uh, fluoridated drinking water, they're, they're getting a, a huge an inappropriate dose of fluoride in the developing brain. This may be part of the reason, for instance, of the depression of IQ that we've seen in these Chinese studies. You do not 